Over the last years, Apache Cassandra became one of the most popular NoSQL solutions for big data. It started back in 2008 as an open source product from Facebook, became an Apache Incubator project in 2009, and graduated to a top level in 2008. It is 3 minutes tech series, I'm Alex Sergienka, and today we will see how Cassandra writes data. Let's go! Let's look at the right path in Cassandra. There are four major participants involved in the process. They are a write or mutation, the commit lock, the mem table, and SS tables. When some mutation has triggered, the changes at first get persisted to the commit lock. It's an append only structure, and each node in the cluster uses its own commit lock. Commit logs are not replicated, but we can tune the consistency and increase durability to the desired level using replication factor. Due to its append-only nature, commit logs ensure extremely fast sequential writes even when using spinning HDDs because no random six are needed. Commit logs are split into segments, which reduces the number of six needed to write to a disk. Writing to commit log also lowers the chances of losing the data due to sudden crashes. After a mutation is written to a commit log, it gets written to a mem table. That's an important point. The commit log and the mem table are not written in parallel. Mem table is an in-memory data structure that is subjected to be periodically written to immutable files called SS tables or sorted string tables. In a nutshell, a mem table represents a row of storage data. After a mutation gets written to an SS table, the round trip considers completed and the acknowledgement returns to the client. Commit logs are faster, since they have to write fewer data compared to SS tables flushing. On the startup, Cassandra reads the commit log from the last known good position and reapplies these changes to related mem tables. Long story short, when you write to Cassandra, there are only fast sequential append to the commit log and even faster writing to mem table are involved. These optimizations make Cassandra extremely fast on writes since no time consuming operations are used. But what's happening after the acknowledgement is sent? Mem tables are periodically flushing to SS tables in a sequential manner, as it was mentioned before. Once SS table is created based on the data from mem table, it becomes immutable. Generally speaking, Cassandra is not about random IO, but about a sequential one. That's become a significant benefit under heavy workloads. SS tables are subjects of compaction. And compaction is a process when two or more SS tables merge sorting together and forming a new SS table as a result. If there was an update or delete, the newest value for the field is retained by compaction and written to a new SS table while the older versions are discarded. Pay attention again, we make sequential reads from SS during compaction, the make a sequential write of a resulting SST and finally delete old files. According to previously mentioned features, Cassandra is ideally suited for time series and other append-only scenarios with high write rates such as change data capture and event sourcing. In opposite short-lived objects and write-lead scenarios are posed a danger for Cassandra performance because such approaches lead to high volumes of so-called tombstones, which may overutilize storage and lead to longer compaction cycles. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Have a nice day, bye!